Well, hello, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts, and today I'm going to do a tutorial for this little adventure sweater I'm making for my grandbaby Jack. He gets to go to Alaska this summer, and so this is a variation on um, some of the different sweater patterns that I've made, but this one's made with Red Heart Super Saver. So things are adjusted a little bit for size and then of course design colors and whatnot. So anyway, let's get started. So the yarn I used is Red Heart Super Saver. This color is Erin. This one is called Patty Green. This is Cherry Red. And then I believe this one's just called Black. And this one is their saffron color. So these are some classic um, Hudson Bay slash Pendleton stripe um, patterns. Uh, I think Hudson Bay uses a navy blue instead of black. So um, I am also using a H five millimeter hook, even though Red Heart uh, on the side, it calls for an I. I just found that my tension, it was really um, kind of loose when I used an I. So I opted to use an H, but you know, it just depends on your own personal tension. Another thing you might want to have handy is some stitch markers just for the first row so that we can mark the corners that will um, start shaping the neck area. So we just need four. Okay, we're going to begin with 44 chains on our hook. And of course, I'm beginning with the Aran color. And we'll begin in the third chain from the hook with a herringbone half double crochet. And work one herringbone half double crochet into each of the remaining chains. And you should end the row with 42 herringbone half double crochets. Okay, so just count each stitch. Ignore the chain to the two that we skipped over. S count each stitch, make sure you have 42, okay? And now we will just chain one and turn. Now let's place the stitch markers. We wanna place them starting in, don't count the chain one, start this very first stitch counting there. Let's place the first stitch marker in the eighth stitch. So this is number eight. Now let's keep counting and place the next one in number 13. So that's eight, 10, 11, 12, 13. So let's make sure that you have one, two, three, four stitches in between those two. And now let's make another stitch marker on the 29th. So this was 13. Twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. And then let's do the 34th, 30, 31, 32, 34. 33, 34, sorry. <laughs> Making sure there's four in between. There we go. Great. And then that should leave us with eight to the end. Eight, perfect. So make sure we've got this all matched up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, and then, you know, the ninth one. Then we have four, and we marked, and we have 15 across the back. 
Okay, a lot of people ask me um, how I kind of come up with this starting chain, and honestly, it's a usually I've kind of learned that it's four to five over the for the shoulders, four to five stitches over the shoulders, and I like to make the front even. So that's you know those were both eight stitches, and then usually I double that number, and that's the number across the back. So today we have 15, but you could also, you know, increase it by one and have 16 across the back. That usually gives you an even, nice, even number that kind of gets you going around the neck. So say you wanted to make this as an adult sweater, because I probably won't make an adult sweater pattern, but I know that there's a lot of you that are asking, you know, just measure across your shoulders and kind of use that ratio. It's like, these numbers are equal and then this number over the shoulder is half of that number so this is eight half of that is four and then double this number is 16 but today i used 15 so it's kind of roughly like that hope that wasn't too complicated <laughs> okay for those of us that you know this sweater can be anywhere from about um i would say 18 months up to 3t so I'll show you how to make those different sizes too but let's begin with working herringbone one herringbone stitch into each stitch up to that stitch marker and in the stitch marker place we're going to work herringbone chain two herringbone so here I am at the stitch marker go ahead and take that out I'm going to work herringbone chain two and herringbone Okay, now do that in every marked stitch all across the row. They get the herringbone, chain two, herringbone, herringbone half, I guess. Okay, the last stitch of this row is worked into the top of the herringbone half stitch. We're ignoring these chain twos that we skipped over at the start of the beginning chain. So from here on out, we're only chaining one and turning. So here we go. Here we, we kind of have shaped our first neck. So what I was explaining before was that I had eight stitches, then a stitch, then four stitches in between those two corners. So I'm talking about the stitches in between. So of course, then you add a stitch. I was thinking about that as I was working this um, just in case you want to design your own. That's kind of a formula that I have been using and that seems to work. Okay, now let's build this neck outwards. And all you'll do is find those chain two spaces. So let's make sure we work into each and every stitch up to the chain two spaces, the chain two space. Okay, so you can see here, there's still a stitch here to be worked. And this is where we'll add the stitches is right into that chain two so go ahead and work your herringbone your chain two and your herringbone now if you're having a hard time finding this this last herringbone to be worked into or I guess when you reverse it's the first one you know because I may want to make sure you don't skip over this one go ahead and place a stitch marker into it so you would want to mark actually this very first one that you made 
just so that you make sure on the return pass, that's the first stitch you're going to work into when you're going around, when you're coming off of that corner. Sometimes that stitch can get hidden and you wanna make sure that you're working into each and every herringbone stitch that you make. The increase is when we add the herringbone right here into the chain two. So herringbone, chain two, herringbone. Sometimes it's actually even hard to distinguish between the chain and the stitch, so might help you out. Okay. Keep building this. Uh, depending on the size that you're making, you want to refer to the pattern on my website, but it, usually it's going to be either 10, 12, or 14 rows. Well, I'm about to start my 12th row. This is about the size I want to make it for Jack. He's a about like in the 12 to 18 month old size. So when you're starting the 12th row and how you'll know that this is the right size facing you is that the starting chain will be over here on your right hand side. So another way too is to, you can see that two rows look really even. This is two, four, six, eight, ten. 10, Here's 11 and I'm about to make 12. So on the 12th round for this size is when we're going to join for the armholes. So what you'll do is go ahead and work all the way over to that chain two space. So work one herringbone into each stitch all the way over there. Okay, so here's my chain two space. We're still going to work one herringbone into that chain two space. We'll still chain two, but we're going to skip over all of these next stitches. Look for your next chain two space and pull that together. That's what creates the armhole. So we'll just pull that chain two space up next to us, next, and that's the next stitch will be. And we've created the armhole. So now work all the way across the back of the sweater. And we will do the same thing. So you'll get across over here and you'll work that. Okay, so like I said, we'll just kind of go over that again. I work one herringbone, chain two, bring the other chain two space across just go ahead and work right into that just like that and then begin working now we're going to work two more rows in this Aran color this cream color before we change to a different color before we change to the green as you work underneath this armpit and where those two chains are, go ahead and make sure that you are working. The easiest way is to just work two herringbone stitches around the two chains. So we're not missing any stitches, we're just adding them around. And just keep working in each each stitch.
Okay, now it's time to change color. So just to make sure that we want this right side to be all even before we do the color. So this is the 15th row. So we've got 14 rows even. So I just um, pull through with the new color. And I go ahead and I don't cut the cream color here. We can just carry that up. It'll be covered. So just still chain one and turn and work those colors. And you will change colors every two rows. So let me show you the sequence on this sweater. So you do two rows of the green, then two rows back to cream, red cream, the yellow cream, the black, and then do one extra row and uh, I'll show you how to do the ribbing. So just work down that, that far. Just in case you didn't know what I meant by carrying the yarn up the side, it's just when it's time to change back to the color, I just reach down here and pull it up and then begin using it. And I'll go ahead and I'll cut the green off. So, hope it's going well for you. I love when you can start seeing the colors. It builds the sweater so quickly, it's so cute. But look at how isn't that amazing? It just turns into a little jacket like that. So, so what size wise, you know, instead of joining the arms on the 12th round, you would join the arms on the 14th round. And I even think you could join it on the 16th, make it probably up to, I want to say a size like a 4T, but I haven't pattern tested that, so you'd have to just maybe measure and see if you were making it for a child that big. But this is where you can adjust the size, is when you join the arms. So I think you even could join um, a row earlier if you wanted to make it 12 month. Um, I wouldn't make it any smaller than that. All right, so I've got another row to finish here and then it's time to start doing the border. But I previously recorded um, making the ribbing, not the border, the ribbing on the bottom and the sleeves when I was making this sweater. So I don't want you to be confused if it, it kind of changes a little bit. And um, so that's it. So you'll work the bottom portion, the sleeves, the hood, and then you'll do all of the ribbing that goes around. When editing this video, I realized I don't have the video showing you how to do the bottom ribbing on the sweater, so you'll have to refer to the pattern on our website. Essentially, start with one row of double crochet into each stitch, and then chain two and turn, and start working alternate front and back post double crochet. I do show how to do the post double crochet at the end of this video when I show how I go around the hood. But I apologize, I just can't find the clip. So here's baby Jack in his sweater trying to learn how to do the scooter. All right, let's put on the sleeve for this sweater. This is what we're going to be doing next. So come over here. Now remember we had those two extra stitches underneath the armpit and then we filled it in with the two herringbone stitches. That's what I'm looking at right now. I'm gonna split those two apart Insert my hook right there, lay my yarn over, pull through, and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little 
chain to lock that down. Now let's work one herringbone stitch right around that space where we pulled up the yarn. So just one herringbone right there. That's our first stitch. Okay, now what you're going to see next is the side of a herringbone stitch on that row and the chain two space. So we want to herringbone two together. We're going to insert our hook around the side of that first stitch, just pull through the first loop, and then do that around in that giant space. We're trying to just kind of fill in the space around the sleeve. Okay, now you are looking for each stitch that goes up and around and just work a herringbone stitch in each one of those chains and then stop before we get to that chain two space and we'll work those herringbone two together. We'll, we'll do that together. I'll come back on camera. So I've worked a herringbone in each one of those stitches and I'm back here. Here's my chain two space. You can see it's kind of that giant hole right there that lines up with the side. So let's work half of that herringbone stitch. Stop right there. Insert our hook around the side of the next stitch. Pull that together. And now here we are back at the bottom. Let's work one herringbone. And I, actually, I'm looks like I'm gonna be splitting that stitch. I'm not too picky about where you insert your hook. Just get one more there. And here we are back to our original first stitch. We will slip stitch to that one, chain two, and let's turn. And now we can just work one in each stitch. Now, right below the turning chain, it looks like that's a stitch. We're going to have the turning chain count as that stitch. So don't put your hook right under the turning chain. Work into the next one. I'm going to work one herringbone all the way around and then we'll change color and add the green. I've worked my way around and one way to tell which is the last stitch you're going to work into is basically the space where you can see that turning chain coming up out of there. That will be our last stitch to work. Now, let's finish that up. And now we will insert our hook into the top. So here's our turning chain, one, two, and then here's the top of the stitch. Insert your hook. Oh, wait. Stop right there. Let's pull through with green, making sure as well that we are going to keep this. It should naturally be to the inside of your sleeve. Let's make sure it's still there because we are going to carry the cream color up the inside of the sleeve so we don't have to cut and weave this end in. We're, trying, we're only gonna have to cut each color that we add. Okay, so chain two and turn your work. And again, we're not placing the first stitch right at the base of the chain two. That is the first stitch. We're going to work right into the next stitch. Work one into each 
stitch going around. Now usually on this um, first time that we're using color, it's a little bit easier to see where the last stitch is that you go is because um, it's the stitch that we changed the color. So that's the last stitch right there. Here's our chain two, and then there's kind of the top of that next stitch. That's where you're slip stitching into. Chaining two, turning, and doing one more round. So working over here, this top of this stitch over here. And you will just continue doing this, switching colors every two rows. I guess I'll show you how to bring up that cream. We'll switch colors one more time, and then I'll come back on for when we do the wrist. Okay, well here's the point where I just finished that last stitch. I'm going to reach down in the middle of my sweater, find the cream, and just pull that through. Chain two and turn. Now I also like to go ahead at this point and just cut the green. I've got these two tails and I'll tuck it on the inside, get it out of my way. Why? I continue to work. So anyway, that's how you're going to work the sleeve, work it all the way down um, and do Actually, on the very last, after you do the black, work three rounds of half double crochet, and then I'll meet you back and I'll show you how to kind of decrease in, bring the sleeve in, and do this cuff. Okay. So this is what your sleeve should look like. Um, I've just got three rows extra. Um, and now we're going to start getting this ribbing put on. So the first round, we want to um, reduce the number of stitches. So I've chained two and turned already. Here we go. So what we'll do is just start as normal, but we'll change to a regular double crochet stitch. And we will work one in each of the next four stitches. So there's three, here's four. And then all you're going to do is simply skip one. So basically you're going to be skipping every fifth stitch. So work four double crochets and then skip the next double crochet. And that will reduce the number of stitches a little bit and bring the sleeve in at the wrist. Okay, and on this, after you're done with four, um, I have one stitch to go, but I'm just gonna go ahead and skip that and join. Chain two and turn. And now here we go. We are going to alternate our post double crochet stitch. So we're going to work a front post double crochet, meaning we insert the hook around the post of the double crochet and pop it forward. Then we're gonna kind of yarn over, insert your hook from the back, and pop that post to the back for a back post double crochet. So again, I'm inserting my hook around the post and popping it forward. Then I'm inserting my hook from the back of the work and back through and popping the post towards the back. I'm just going to do that all the way around, alternating.
So now I'm here at the end of the round. And so I just have a front post double crochet. I just have the churning chain left. I'll just slip stitch as usual. Chain two and turn my work. And if my next stitch, it's to the back of the work. So we're going to just make sure these posts all line up the same direction. So there's my first one. And I'm gonna pop this one to the front. So if it's popping to the back, keep it popping to the back. And pop this one to the front. And you will do that for, let's see, this is my one, two, five. We wanna have five rows total. So do this two more times. And then tie off and you have got the wrist portion all finished. All right, the next part we're going to get started is the hood. Okay, just identify the top corner position, pull up a loop, kind of give yourself a long tail there, chain one, and go ahead and work your half double crochet, not half double, the herringbone, right into that stitch. Work one herringbone stitch on the underside of that starting chain all the way around the neck. You're going to want to build this up for 10 inches. So we're just going to go back and forth across this neckline and it builds up a, you know, kind of like a square. And then we'll sew that together. But for now, just work one stitch per the underside of every stitch there. Chain one and turn at the end of the row and continue working. Okay, so here is the hood. Okay, so we have our tapestry needle and our tail here. I'm just going to line up the stitches and kind of do an extra one across this first one. And then I'm just going to sew underneath both loops here. And get this all sewn together across the top. So this is what it will look like when you've got it all sewn across the top. Just kind of blends right in and I'll just take the time to just kind of weave this end in and out, hide the tail, and I'll clip that off. And this is how you'll, you know, if you haven't ever seen weaving in of the ends, this is how it's done. Sometimes I like to go and split the yarn a little bit too, kind of makes it more secure. overall there's no wrong way to thread the needle in and out of the stitches just just weave it in and out that ought to be good enough so clip that off that gets hidden away and now we have our hood. We're ready to go and start the ribbing. 
that will finish off. We also, um, part of the ribbing why I do the hood first is because I need really about two inches more of, of depth to make this fit the depth of his head. So now we'll be able to add that and it adds just a little bit more to the, you know, so the jacket can lay over like that. And I'll show you the buttons that we're gonna put on it super easy. All right, with the right side facing you, let's just start in that bottom right hand corner. We are going to use, going back to the double crochet stitch, it'll be exactly what we just worked on the bottom of the sweater. So the only thing I think I need to really show you is, oops, that was not, make sure you start where that last stitch was. I am going to chain two to begin and then double crochet across the ribbing portion. I'm working two double crochet per the side of each double crochet post or around the posts. So of each double crochet that I am working two. Okay, and now when I get up here, remember we do have this one row of herringbone that we put on before we did the rows. So just, just do one extra stitch right there. But now, per every stitch of the color or every two rows, we want to work three double crochet. So now I'm going to skip all the way up to the bottom of that row. and work three. So there's my three, so I'm gonna skip up. And that's all you'll do for this. And then it's basically the same all the way around the hood and back down to the other side. Remember to switch back to working two around when you get to the ribbing. So keep working that and that, that makes it uh, give us just enough stitches so that we're kind of laying flat so that when we come back the next round with all of our ribbing, it's gonna look really nice and neat. Okay, so I've made it all the way around the sweater. So here's the hood. Oops, just dropped my hook. Just so you can see how this is looking. So now let's get this next row of ribbing going. So all you need to do same thing, chain two and turn. And, you know, I won't work this first double crochet, but I will work into the next one. And I'm going to pop that one forward and the next one back. And just keep alternating just like we did at the bottom of the sweater. This will look nice. We're gonna do this. I'm gonna go around and come back. All right, so I hope your sweater turned out really cute. I've got one more thing left to do and that's to attach the buttons. You don't have to worry about buttonholes because these just slide through. They're really 
flexible. Just try and find um, these thick buttons. I'm going to Michael's. I think that's where I got them for. So I'm on one side and then they'll just push through any of these ribbing holes and then you'll be done. So thank you so much. I hope this tutorial is helpful. Please find the full written pattern on and a printable on daisyfarmcrafts.com and enjoy making your adventure sweater for whatever little person you have in your life. So we'll see you guys next time. Thank you.